Fannie Knight and FIPS 200 are information categorization or classification standards, if you will, for civilian federal government data. They feed into the uh, NIST Special Publication 800-30, where risk assessment requires use of specific uh, risk categorization of the particular data you're looking at. FIPS 199-200. It's all about risk assessment and risk management. Federal agencies must conduct these assessments, these risk assessments, per the Federal Information Security Management Act of 2002, or FISMA. That particular act requires NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, to develop standards to categorize information based on a level of risk, which is FIPS 199, and to secure that information appropriate to this level. FIPS 199 defines the security categories for information and information systems. And these categories are based on security objectives. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability are good old friend CIA here. <coughs> FIPS 199 also requires that you look at levels of impact if a security breach occurs. A low level of impact is defined as a limited adverse effect on organizational operations, assets, or individuals. A moderate impact event is defined as serious adverse effect on operations, assets, or individuals. And high is a severe or catastrophic adverse effect on operations, assets, or individuals. So we see the impact is on the, the people, the assets, and the operations. And you've got a low, moderate to high scale, which is your basic qualitative impact scale. Security categorization combines both CIA and the slow, moderate, and high categorization in, in a triplet, meaning for confidentiality, you have a particular impact. For integrity, you have the impact to integrity. And availability, you have the intact for availability. And I've got the example right here from the NIST, from the FIPS publication, rather. You know, if there's no potential loss from confidentiality, moderate from integrity, and moderate from availability, then you've got this security categorization you see here at the bottom, where co confidentiality is not applicable, integrity is moderate, and availability is moderate. What if a system has a mix of information? What if there are different levels or different types of information having different impacts on CIA? How do we deal with that? Well, the overall category is the highest value within C, I, or A. It's the high watermark. So of all the information, the one that provides you with the most critical confidentiality rating, the most critical integrity, the most critical availability, that is what the system overall is rated as. It's rated as the most sensitive, the most critical information within it. And here we have some potential impact definitions. You know, we have uh, the objective and they define you know, in the U.S. code, what confidentiality, integrity, and availability are. And then they define here in the matrix following the potential impact, the low column, moderate, and high is, you know, what the particular criteria is for the impact of one of these things happening. Now, FIPS 200. FIPS 199 determines the classification of a system. FIPS 200 provides guidance to properly protect the system based on its classification. The controls fall within 17 categories, and I'm going to enumerate each one. This may initially look a little bit like, say, oh, ISO 27000, but it's not. It's not. This is not ISO 27000. So controls, means, or countermeasures, as they're sometimes called in other contexts, not here. Here we call them controls. You've got access control. You've got awareness and training audit and accountability, certification, accreditation, and security assessments where certification and accreditation have specific meanings that a system and its overall environment has been reviewed and assessed and is deemed secure enough to be stood up for production use, configuration management, contingency planning, identification and authentication, incident response, now here's some more of the 17. Maintenance, media protection, physical and environmental protection, planning, personnel security, risk assessment, 
Systems and Services Acquisition, System and Communication Protection, Protection, and System and Information Integrity. These are all controls that FIPS 200 calls out as potential countermeasures for reducing the impact of a threat. Now in FIPS 200, you select specific controls as described in the NIST Special Publication 853. Adequate security is required, and this is a complex process. Overall, FIPS 199 categorization is just the first step. It's just a, a small brick in the overall wall of risk assessment and risk control and risk management. FIPS 200, low impact systems. Remember, we have that triple CIA and low, moderate, and high impact. So for low impact systems, employ controls from NIST SP 853, low baseline, and meet the minimum assurance requirements. Moderate impact systems, use the moderate baseline and meet the associated requirements. And then for high impact systems, employ controls from 853, high baseline, and meet those minimum impact requirements. And that's it.